welcome to The Palette, a podcast about language learning and teach training. My name's Becky and today I'm talking with Delta trainer Nick Witherick. This is the second episode in our Delta series and today we're taking an in-depth look at module one. Welcome to The Palette. My name is Becky and today I'm here with Nick Witherick, who is one of our Delta trainers. We're going to take a much more in-depth look at module one today to explain all the various parts that make up this element of the Delta course. Um, So hi, Nick. How are you? Fine. Thanks, Becky. How are you? Good. I'm very good. Thank you. Uh, So if you don't mind, I'll just get straight into it, if that's okay with my questions. Brilliant. Yeah. Perfect. So, uh, can you, first of all, give us a little overview to module one of the Delta? Sure, yeah. So, as I said in the last um, podcast, module one is understanding language methodology and resources for teaching and explores the background to teaching, the underpinning theory, practical applications, and how these are informed by linguistics and language learning theories. Um, We'll unpack that in a bit, but a module one course is focused on and tested by written examination. The exam itself is taken on the first Wednesday of June and December every year. There are two papers, each an hour and a half long. They have to be taken on the morning of the exam day, and there is a short break between them. Both papers carry 100 marks, and your overall score is the total from both papers divided by two. So a pass is around 50%, merit around 60, and distinction around 70 and above. Um, regarding time allocation, certain tasks take um, carry more marks, and so you spend more time on them. So, for example, paper one, task five, has 50 marks, so that's 50% of the marks for that paper, so you spend 50% of your time on it. Okay, so it's a written exam, but where can you actually take it? Yeah, at any registered Cambridge exam centre. So basically any school or centre that does Cambridge main suite exams, such as PET, FCE, CE, etc. Um, there are Cambridge centres in pretty much every country in the world. Um, depending on the course provider you choose, you may be charged for this on top of the Cambridge exam fee. And it's worth saying that these administration fees can vary greatly. Um, Distance Delta, which I work on, um, has an agreement with the British Council, and there are obviously British councils all over the world, to limit this to £50, but it can be way more. Okay, that's good to know. And another thing that I think a lot of people will be wondering is, what happens if you fail? Yeah, you basically take it again, and if needed, again, there's no limit on the number of times you can take the exam, but you obviously need to wait for the next exam in either June or December. Um, results take around nine or ten weeks, something like that. Okay, so how are the two papers different? Yeah, paper one has five tasks, paper two has three parts, um, but some of the tasks have more than one part. Um, But the main difference is paper one is more focused on language systems, um, learners, linguistic problems and terminology. And paper two is more focused on knowledge of resources, um, materials and key testing concepts. And there's more on theoretical perspectives on language acquisition and language teaching, different teaching approaches and methodologies, including current developments in paper two. Okay, interesting. So I've heard people say the exam is all about terminology. But there's more to it than that? Yeah, yeah, a lot more. So there's a practical focus throughout the exam. I mean, okay, the first two tasks of paper one are focused on terminology, basically identifying some terms and then defining some terms. But there aren't a great deal of marks attached to these tasks. Um, Task four and task five carry way more marks. And though you need to use accurate terminology to score well, it's not terminology for the sake of it. It's about applying it. So in task four, you get a sample of learners speaking or writing. You basically appraise it for its strengths and weaknesses. I mean, it's what you often have to do as a teacher. In task five, you analyze an authentic text, looking at its genre, as well as analyzing specific features um, from a grammatical, lexical, discoursal, phonological perspective. And yeah, using authentic text is also a commonplace thing for teachers to do. In task three, you get a typical speaking or writing task for a particular level. 
and you have to identify the language and sub skills learners need to do that. So as I said, it's all very practical. Okay, so that's paper one. What about paper two? Yeah, the first task looks at a test and the profile of a learner and you have to decide what its advantages and disadvantages are. Um, testing learners is usual in most teaching institutions. Um, the second task looks at a fairly typical double page spread of a course book. And you basically unpack it by looking at the purposes of certain exercises, how the tasks and the material link together and then what the underlying assumptions are. In other words, what the beliefs of the writers of the material are. Um, you know, things like pair work is useful, learners need to process a text for meaning before they analyse it, etc. I mean, for me, this is a really useful task, helping you understand the key principles of, you know, the materials you use day in and day out. Mm, definitely, that makes complete sense. And what about the third task then? Yeah, um, paper two, task three is a slight curveball. It looks at an area of debate in ELT, um, for example, whether to use translation or not whether it's better to present rules first and or let learners discover them, whether to correct learners on the spot or delay it, etc. Um, you then look at the different sides of the debate. Um, so this task links a practical classroom issue with theoretical perspectives on language acquisition and also language teaching. Okay, right. So what do you actually write? Yeah, important question. For most of the tasks, it's basically bullet points, short phrases, numbered points. And in the case of paper two, task three, lots of points, but full sentences. But you're not writing essays. Um, also, you're not assessed on your ability to write English. The only thing I will say is you must spell the terms correctly. So words that are typically misspelled like auxiliary, consonants, anaphoric, etc., that kind of thing. So also apart from paper two, task three, you're not going to be quoting sources and mentioning theories. Okay, that's very useful to know. Uh, so what kind of module one courses are there? Yeah, I mean, they vary greatly, but the majority of these days seem to be online rather than face to face. And I think the nature of module one does lend itself to distance learning. Um, for example, the Distance Delta does a part-time 12-week course, which is probably the optimal amount of time if you wanted to work and do a course. Although I know there are shorter, more intensive courses out there, as well as blended options. Um, on the Distance Delta, it's primarily an online course, but there are some live sessions as well as optional face-to-face -face online tutorials as well. In the last podcast, uh, you mentioned that there isn't a fixed order that you had to take the modules in. So how does that affect the way that one might prepare for module one? Yeah, exactly. The, the type of preparation does depend on whether you've done module two already. But as with any exam, it's obviously about deepening your understanding of the, the course syllabus, which if you haven't done module two will be a significant amount of work. But it's also about knowing the exam itself inside out and knowing exam technique. Therefore, as well as the background reading side of things, most courses offer some kind of exam practice, usually a few tasks at a time, which culminates in a mock exam or two towards the end of the course. Okay, so where would you recommend someone starts? I, I personally would recommend by starting having a look at an actual exam paper so you know what you're dealing with. Um, it's worth saying that Cambridge don't release many, but there's an example in the Delta 2015 handbook. Uh, you can find this on the Cambridge website. They also released a 2015 paper, and there are some sort of pre-2015 updated papers out there. But make sure what you're looking at has been updated to the 2015 specifications. Okay, that's very useful to know. And something else that I think uh, our listeners will be very interested in, that's very important. What are the biggest challenges in module one? Yeah, in terms of background reading, and assuming you haven't done module two already, the new areas for those on module one tend to be things like discourse analysis and looking at genre, and in some cases, phonology. Um, and I must, I must just say that you need to use phonemic transcription in the exam and some people find this challenging. Mm -hmm. well, that makes absolute sense. Uh, and I've heard it's written by hand. Yes, and that's quite challenging too. So for some taking the exam, it would have been a long time since they've written this much by hand. So for that reason, we do handwritten mock exams, which are scanned and uploaded. Um, so you know what to expect. 
very sensible. Yeah, it's a, a skill you have to work on writing in, at speed by hand. Um, perfect. Well, that was a really detailed tour of Delta Module 1, Nick. So thank you so much for taking the time to answer all those questions. Really, really useful. Uh, and thank you for being on the podcast today. You're welcome, Becky. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. Bye.